Steve, good afternoon. It's been a little while since we since we caught up um, to discuss things. I guess, to be honest, us like the rest of the division are, are still waiting for a bit more information to, to come out from, from Central, from the RFU. Um, what's the last few weeks look like in your world? And I mean, what progress and updates can you give us? Yeah, it's frustrating at the moment. We're um, we're still waiting on confirmation from the RFU. At the moment, it's probably looking like uh, the testing in might be having to come into the league but obviously the, we know the the big stumbling blocks around testing are, are finance because uh, at the moment it's not very uh, it's, it's not a very um, cheap product to, to, at the moment for, for championship clubs um, so that's the battle we've got at the moment but you know we're working really hard and we're quite confident we will be back in, in the near future Um I can't give you too much on that I don't know that much myself, uh, but I do know there is a lot of progress being made. Obviously, I think fans now know that Doncaster Phoenix, they had their first training session back at Castle Park um, last week. Obviously, the community game is starting to come back. Um, it's not quite that easy, I guess, to bring back, back the Knights and the Championship squads. I know some are back in training, but could you just explain sort of some of the nuances and the reasons why we haven't started training yet? All of us are absolutely itching to get back in, which is not always the case pre-season. But the players are literally desperate to get back into pre-season, which is, you know, like I said it's not always the case. But um, you know, we're we're ready for it. It's just the fact that obviously with the furlough system and finance, we've been a professional outfit. Bringing them back in means they've got to be come off the furlough, which doesn't suit, you know, financially for a business model of where we are right now. And as a club of our size, doesn't fit. Um, some clubs have gone down a route, you know, Jersey, Ely in the back, they're back and they're, and they're, and they're fully training. Um, we decided as a club that it'd be, it wouldn't be worth doing until we get a start date. And we have no start date. So as soon as we get a start date, then we'll be like, right, here we go. And we're looking to potentially get, you know, between 12 and eight weeks of prep. I'm sure most people are pretty familiar with how tough it, it has been financially out there at the moment, not just for sports clubs. And also, I guess, a an endless pre-season sounds like a lot of players' idea of hell. So uh, let's wait until we can, can yeah. get a start date on right. them. It dies as well when you haven't got, an end goal of where you want to be um, or the first game so they're quite hard to periodise and like I said it could be you know some clubs now have been in training for five months and you know that's that's fantastic for them I think you know and, and tip of the hat to them to get back in but you know we just financially it's not it's not viable for us to do that We are now into a stage of the furlough where I think it's a flexible furlough and I know that you have got Dougie Flockhart issuing sort of individual fitness uh, and strength programs to players that they are being expected to do in their own time. Yeah, they've got um, programs that they're running at home. Obviously, it's 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 just basically covering off a lot of stuff that we're feeling like it's going to be a challenge when we come back. You know, we've got to realise these players now have had the most amount of time off they've ever had in their careers, or away from the club. So we're basically going to unknown territory. Um, Obviously, there's been a lot of soft tissue injuries, so that's like muscle pulls and tears in other other formats of sport that have come back. Um, so I think the main thing at the moment is that they keep the running running volume up and the running uh, and, and the, the, it, it's periodised properly where they don't have to peak now, but they need to be ready to come back into pre-season. So they're constantly making sure they're getting plenty of metres in the legs and different types of metres. So changing direction can cause, in, you know, getting plenty of those sort of things in, stop starts, um, obviously some high high speed running, some sort of constant pace running. So the majority of it, I don't know the full science of it, you know, but I know roughly. Um, and that's, they've got to tick those bits off. Plus the big thing, one thing they have challenged the guys on is probably one of the only times in the career they're ever going to get where they can really work on like out maximal strength. Um, so they're doing like a you know the pretty hard um, weights program at the moment, which I've seen and thought about doing and decided not to bother. Um, but that's is a really big you know that that's that's something that's really challenging for them. Um, also, the stronger they are, the more robust they're going to be when they come back. 
Um, you know, so the challenge we're going to face with come back is that the intensity straight away goes up because you start training as a team. And as much as you train individually, when you train as a team, you know, the intensity goes up. And that's a challenge we're going to have as coaches and, and, and as a, uh, you know, a medical and S&C team is whatever time we get, it's really, it's, it's quite tough because it's hard to periodise it because we want to, we can't start too hard because we'll get, straight away we'll get a spike and we'll get quite a few injuries or the, the, the inevitable we, we, we probably will do but we also can't start too soft because we potentially could have a game in eight to ten weeks and we need to hit the ground running so it's really hard to get that balancing act so, you know we haven't got a huge squad um, it's hard to get that balancing act between you know keeping boys fit and healthy and performance and that's where we've got to make sure we're constantly connecting and aligned and uh Hopefully we can we can push the team in the right direction. This week we were able to um, release uh, the names of the players that will be uh, parting ways with the club this time. And there's obviously some players on that list that have been with us for a long time. And obviously your first season back with the club was last year. But uh, there'll be many players there that the, the fans and probably yourself want to wish all the best to and uh, see you do well in the life post uh, rugby or with other clubs. Yeah, I'm rightly so. I said there's been some great servants to the club. I mean... I won't go through them all because, you know, obviously it, um, it would take, take a long time because there's a big turnover of players this year. But, you know, they've all they've been in a Doncaster shirt and, uh, you know, they've all given into giving into Doncaster as much as they could. So, you know, it's, like I said, they deserve a, a good send-off. It's a shame that we can't do that. Um, like I said, and there's some special guys in there, I suppose, Hilsey, Quig, who have been at the club for a long, you know, a long, a long time and put a lot into it. And, you know, there's some success and they've, been through different different areas at the club and um, I'm pretty sure they're going to be back down at the club um, supporting. Um, they're always welcome. Everyone's always welcome. It'd be great to see all those faces again at the club. Interesting bit of news coming out very much in the last sort of day or two. One of the, the current squads going to uh, go on loan with Saracens till the end of the current uh, Premiership season then to link back up with us ahead of 2021-22. Um, I guess that's a bit of recognition for the solid work that he's been doing for the Knights for the last couple of years and a big opportunity that we, we hope he does well in before coming back to Castle Park. Yeah, no, I think first, you know, I think it's congratulations to Robin. I think um, he's a true professional. Um, he's, you know, he's, he, he, he definitely, he's fully committed to the team and, in, in, and personally his own goals. Uh, I think if anyone deserves it, it's him. Um, I think in a club situation as a coach, head coach, I've been in this situation before, and it's always it's always a bit of a bittersweet to see them go. Although we're going to get him back, because you always worry about them not coming back. But um, he he'll come back to Doncaster a better player from experiencing a really good environment. I've been down to Saracens. And I spent two or three days with in, in, in their environment and it's a fantastic environment, it's world class. Uh, and I think he'll come back a lot better player. He'll hopefully come back and add something to our camp again and take it up another level. Um, and like I said, I think it just shows you what we're trying to do here. We're trying to, as a club, we support it. We want to be, we want people that are ambitious, that want to play at the next level, want to test themselves and get better um, and grow. And this is just showing exactly what we're about as uh, you know, moving forward as a Doncaster Knights team. Finally, Steve, I appreciate you giving us um, sort of as much updates uh, as you can. Is it just that you know, as soon as we do have a start date and as soon as we know more, we will share that with you and we want to be as transparent as possible. But at the moment, we are still waiting on uh, being told what we can do from the powers that be. Yeah, exactly that. Um, you know, it's something that moving forward as a coaching team, management team, and the supporters, we want to share a lot of stuff. Um, we want to be connected. Uh, we feel it's important because I think sometimes it, you, you can see why we're doing stuff that you might not understand in the first place. Um, so we, we, we are going to try and work a really close relationship between the, the coaching staff and the supporters. Um, and that, that, that starts with that. As soon as we know something, then the supporters will know something. But we can't tell you something we don't already know. Um, what we can say is we the frustrations you're feeling we probably feel them ten times over because it's you know it's our it's our careers and it's our livelihoods and we're desperate to get back in and 
what it will do potentially is, is when we do get back in, it'll probably make us a lot more um, appreciative of what we do.